सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव कवर्ड विद टू मॉड्यूल्स मॉड्यूल वन मॉड्यूल टू एंड टिल नाउ यू शुड बी बींग थरो अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नेटवर्क एनालिसिस हाउ टू सॉल्व द कॉम्प्लेक्स सर्किट्स वेन एवर वी आर हैंडल्ड वन कॉम्प्लेक्स सर्किट यू शुड बी एनालाइजिंग दैट सर्किट एंड यूजिंग सम ऑफ द कॉन्सेप्ट विच आव टोल्ड यू एंड फ्रॉम दैट यू शुड बी ट्राइंग टू रेड्यूज द सर्किट बाई यूजिंग सम ऑफ द फॉर्मुलाज and all the concepts that is star delta transformation mesh analysis node analysis uh, super mesh super node all of them basics dependent sources all the four kinds of dependent sources then in module 2 all the theorem superposition thevenin's norton's maximum power transfer milman's all how those things are interlinked to each other all of them you should be knowing till now because this module name that is module 5 two port networks would be a combination of all of these whatever till now we have discussed we should be applying that to this and we should be trying to solve the complex networks okay all the concepts should be interlinked here you should be knowing especially mesh analysis okay that is very important if you know that this module is very easy the name of the module is two port networks this is the first chapter of this module this module is very big this is divided into two chapters the second chapter name is resonance okay resonance also that's also one very interesting topic the problems are straight forward okay the two types of resonance basically we are having series resonance and parallel resonance that we are going to see when we are do covering that chapter so this chapter also is very important much many much concepts are there very interesting concept you would be understanding it very easily okay so let us uh, start with the basics of this a pair of terminals at which an electric signal may enter or leave a network is called a port okay which is called as port a pair of terminals at which an electric signals may enter or this is a channel and leave so this whole thing here is called a port okay or a channel here the one channel is given an input is provided that is entered and left and that providing as an output that thing is called as a port okay network block with i1 and v1 this is an input port a network and the output port and here we will be having one current i1 which is entering the network similarly from the output port the current i2 is also entering the network these two are input and output ports okay in this two port network port 1 is referred as input port with the parameters v1 and i1 port 2 is referred to as output port with the parameters v2 and i2 both the ports are coming inside the network okay inputs and outputs are coming inside the network and in the network they are interrelating and providing you the desired output or result okay these two are called as input and output ports okay this this is one thing so let us see some of the assumptions the network inside the box is assumed to have only the linear elements the network may consist of dependent sources but independent sources are not allowed okay the network may consist of dependent sources independent sources are not allowed the network inside the box is assumed to have only the linear elements okay linear elements are only present in these two port networks okay but independent sources are not allowed this is the first assumption we have considered second assumption if the network consists of energy storing elements like inductor and capacitor then the initial condition on them is assumed to be zero okay whenever we have inductor and capacitor but in most of the problems we are not having inductor inductors and capacitors we are having only the resistances so that's why the zero part is there the assumed to be zero that we should not be taking into the into the consideration okay in order to describe the relationship between port voltages and currents one requires the linear equations equal to the number of ports okay so that's why hence two linear equations for two port network that is form the two port networks we can obtain these linear equations by considering two variables that is one is dependent variables and the remaining two as independent variables okay dependent and independent variables this you should be keeping in mind very important okay the equations as well as relationships among the dependent and independent variables can be obtained by some of the network parameters so now these four parameters are mentioned here right very important this whole chapter lies within these four parameters only these four parameters in thoroughly if you understand this chapter is all yours you can score easily in this chapter the four parameters are z parameters capital z 
and these are also called as impedance parameters second one is y parameters that is y stands for admittance which i've already told you in my previous module module 2 that is admittance stand for reciprocal of uh, resistance y parameter for admittance parameters h parameter for hybrid parameters t parameter for transmission parameters another name for this t parameters is abcd parameters okay the dependent and independent variables are interlinked to each other forming a particular relationship and they are formed by these four network parameters which i mentioned here okay you should be remembering these four parameters thoroughly so one by one we are going to discuss all kinds of parameters now starting with z parameters okay that is open circuit impedance parameters okay let us discuss this z parameters now okay very easy you can understand it very easily let us see and some of the set of equations we are going to obtain in this z parameters which are very important to solve the complex networks in this case okay these z parameters are obtained by expressing voltages at two ports in terms of current at two ports okay that is the definition is these are obtained by expressing voltages at two ports v1 and v2 in terms of current at two ports that is v1 is equal to function of i1 comma i2 v2 is equal to function of i1 comma i2 okay v1 is equal to the function of i1 comma i2 you, here we would be getting the terms uh, only of currents i1 and i2 along with the coefficients okay similarly for v2 we would be getting the coefficients i1 and i2 where this i1 and i2 that is the function in brackets whatever it's written those are independent variables and these two are called as dependent variables that is v1 and v2 hope this is clear independent variables are common for both v1 and v2 okay you should be keeping in mind these two independent variables are same for both v1 and v2 and v1 and v2 separately are called as dependent variables so how it is interlinked with z parameters is very simple v1 is equal to i have told you right v1 is the function of i1 and i2 that is we can write v1 is equal to z11 z suffix 11 i1 plus z12 i2 where z11 and z12 let us consider some coefficients similarly v2 is equal to z21 i1 plus z22 i2 so now we can represent these two equations in matrix form by writing these two separately z1 v1 v2 is equal to all the coefficients z11 z12 z21 z22 these four values are very important you should be remembering it z11 z12 z21 z22 uh, try to write it in matrix into uh, the uh, what to say uh, independent variables i1 and i2 okay in matrix where z11 is equal to v1 by i1 when applied with the condition that i2 is equal to 0 okay our goal is in these kind of problems individually to find all the values of z11 z12 z21 z22 with the condition that any one of the independent variable should be equal to 0 so that's why like this you would be getting the first value of z11 that is equal to v1 by i1 applied with the condition that i2 is equal to 0 let us take it now so this is the equation here where this, which consists of z11 here they have given the condition that z11 would be equal to v1 by i1 when i2 equal to 0 when i2 equal to 0 this whole term would be equal to 0 we would be left with only v1 is equal to z11 i1 so if you bring z11 to other side if, if you keep z11 to one side and i1 if you bring it to other side it would be equal to v1 by i1 that only we have written here right z11 is equal to v1 by i1 applied with the condition that i2 is equal to 0 and the unit here is ohms why because resistance r or impedance is equal to v by i here also we have got v and i in the v in the numerator i in the denominator so this z11 is represented in terms of ohms and we have a name for this z11 that is open circuit input impedance at port 2 this is called as open circuit input impedance okay why it is impedance because it is represented in ohms i have told you it is v by i similarly z12 z12 means when i1 is equal to 
we would be getting the value of z12 that is this whole term is zero now we would be left with v1 is equal to z12 i2 so that z12 is equal to v1 and i2 if you bring it to the side it would be v1 by i2 applied with the condition that i1 equal to zero again we have v by i so this is again represented in ohms again an input input imp impedance but this time it is open circuit forward transfer impedance this is the input impedance this is the forward transfer impedance because we have current i2 in this case Similarly, for Z21, when applied with the condition that I2 is equal to 0, where Z21 consists in this equation, I2 equal to 0, this whole time is 0, while solving this, we would be getting our answer as V2 by I1. And this is called as open circuit reverse transfer impedance, okay? One is forward transfer, one is reverse, reverse transfer, because here we have V1 I2, and here we have V2 I1. Again, this is impedance because we have V by I. Similarly, Z22 is equal to V2 by I2 and this is open circuit output impedance. Here since we have both are V2 and I2 and here we have both V1 and I1. So this is input impedance and this is output impedance. So like this, all four values are represented Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22 and the equivalent network of two port network in terms of Z parameters can be written like this. Okay, this is not so important. In just to represent in the problems they have just given it like this where these all these kind of uh, parameters would be having some dependent sources in it okay starting we are going to start the problems with the simple circuits only not with the dependent source okay so this was all about z parameters okay I have tried to discuss the z parameters in brief hope this video for uh, is useful for you all we have started with Z parameters and from the next session onwards we are going to solve problems related to Z parameters which are very important. I am going to try to cover those problems also. Two problems we are going to solve from Z parameters and we are going to make you thorough about this concept. Okay. If you know one parameter, rest all the three parameters, the, the solving problem, the technique of solving problems remains the same for all the four. There is no difference in that. Only if you know one parameter how to solve thoroughly. All four parameters are very easy, you can solve it and you can complete this chapter within uh, two to three days if you watch my videos. Okay, very easy chapter, but it is lengthy. You need to work out. If you don't work out and practice, this is very tough. Okay, so that's why that's all for this session, guys. Like this video, share this video to a huge number, and uh, support us, guys. Thank you.